اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا بالقاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ و آلہ و سلم لا سیما بقیت الله روحی و ارواح العالمین لتراب مقدمه الفداء My very dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام علیکم جمیعا و رحمت الله و برکاتو I would like to share with you a few words in this, uh, uh, in this respectful gathering that is held in memory of in fact one of the most outstanding scholars that from the time of the very time of the beginning of the major occultation up until present time the Shia history, the Islamic history, the human history in fact has failed to produce one similar to him and that is none other than Sayyid Ruhullah al-Musawi al-Khomeini al-Imam al-Khomeini Ridwanullah ta'ala alayh for this uh, sorrowful occasion of the 25th anniversary of the demise of Imam Khomeini Ridwanullah alayh I would like to uh, uh, offer my condolences to all of you brothers and sisters as well as our present Imam Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif May I invite all of you to share uh, uh, the reward of recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha Tasbaquha uh, salawatu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad dedicated to his soul Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad As my time is very limited, I share with you, inshallah, very briefly and very evidently uh, a topic that I like to, uh, to really alert all of you, all of us, about it related to uh, uh, Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi and our modern era. Since 9-11, uh, there was a new world order. And uh, in fact, with the rise of secularism, as I have heard this many times from them, Judaism as well as Christianity, they have been archived. No longer they existed in, in practice within the societies. The only problem has been and still is Islam for secularism, counterattacking secularism. The, the solution that post 9-11 they have come up with, and it's something that I'd like to share with you to, today, and in, in, in this gathering, and I'm quoting it from the horse's mouth, is to see how we can pervert Islam. Instead of fighting Islam directly, the plot against Islam is to pervert Islam. And perversion and distortion of Islam, not by non-Muslims, that by and large Muslims won't take it, won't accept it. No, the plot is to pervert Islam by the so-called Muslims, and not again ordinary Muslims, Muslim leaders. As Molavi uh, Rumi says, Mahi asar gande gardad neizadom, or Mahi asar gande gardad neizadom. Fish grows from the head, he says, the very famous Iranian uh, Sufi and poet. He says, a fish grows from his head. Uh, not from the tail. Likewise, a fish spoils from his head, not his tail. This is a metaphoric expression that whatever happens, happens from the head of the community. If the head of the community is spoiled, the community is spoiled. If the head of community is, is pious and spiritual, the community will also grow in piety and uh, spirituality. إِذَا فَسَدَ الْعَالِمُ فَسَدَ الْعَالَمُ now, to tell you that how this plot was formulated and really was practiced, I like to take you to some years back. Since 2003, and then four and five, and finally 2006, there have been conferences called Imam conferences 
in various Western countries, North America, Europe, and finally in 2006 in Australia, in Sydney, that I witnessed that myself, and I'd like to share that with you to tell you exactly, and quoting from the horse's mouth, what was the satanic plot formulated then and still is being implemented, implemented against the, the Muslim uh, community. In 2006, an Imam's conference was held in one of the most uh, luxurious hotels in Sydney, funded and sponsored by the Australian government. Over 100 uh, Muslim Imams were invited from across the, the country to that conference, three days conference. The conference was addressed by a parliamentary secretary and that was a very good evidence, in fact, to tell us that what was that conference all about? How come a secular government is funding a conference about Islam and inviting all the imams? What is the, uh, the agenda really in that? In the conference, the parliamentary secretary, spokesman of the government, he says that you imams have got the opportunity here to explain the following to your community. Not only the opportunity, he was in fact demanding and dictating that. The very first, and I'll quote from his official website, he says that the very first opportunity that you have to explain to your community is to tell them that the true expression of Islam is not in conflict with the Western way of life. Western lifestyle should not be in conflict with Islam. It is your responsibilities, you imams, you spiritual leaders, the religious leaders of your community to present Islam in such a way, and I make it, I explain it of course. What is the Western lifestyle? We all know that. Go to the pubs on Friday evening, meet up with your manager, dating, you name it, drinking, it's, it's part of Western lifestyle, isn't it? Come out of closet and you name it, all of the above. Western lifestyle. You need to explain it to your community, present Islam, interpret Islam in such a way that does not come with any conflict with Western lifestyle. So you need to explain Islam to a Muslim girl in such a way that she does not see any conflict between being a Muslim and at the same time she doesn't have to wear the hijab when she comes out because the Western lifestyle is not, doesn't have that dress code that you Muslims have. One. Second, he says that you imams and the religious leaders have the responsibility to explain to your community, interpret Islam in such a way that the relationship anyone of any faith has with their God is one-to-one -one relation. It's a very personal relation. Keep your religion, in other words, in your heart. Don't bring it to school. Don't bring it to workforce. You are in a corporate, uh, in, uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, organization, company, working. What is this dress code? Why are your sister dressed like this? You need to explain to Muslims that if you want to be religious, be religious in your heart and keep it inside your house. You may dress as you like traditionally, Islamically, as you, as you wish at home. Keep it there at home, but don't bring it out. Don't publicize it. This is what the parliamentary secretary is dictating to over 100 Muslim imams and religious uh, leaders. What else? He continues by saying that one of the most fundamental aspects of democracy in the West is the separation of church and state. And you imams have the responsibility to explain that to your community, all right? You need to explain to the community that keep the religious affairs inside the mosque. Don't bring it to, uh, to the state. Leave the state and, and political affairs to us and you'll be busy with your leading the prayers and congregations inside the mosque. State and religion must be two separated uh, identities from the Islamic point of view. And don't tell me that, but my Islamic evidences don't, do not prove that because I, you have to see Islam the way I want you to see. Exactly the pharaonic uh, approach. I show you what I want you to see. I want you to, to interpret Islam the way that I want you to, to understand it. Okay? What else? And he further continued uh, 
uh, uh, amazingly quoted some of the verses and the ayat of the Quran and he said that you Imams have responsibility to denounce and I'm quoting exactly a strong denunciation and correction of these verses is one of your fundamental responsibilities denunciation of these verses of the Quran these or these verses they don't exist in the Quran this is not true they must be added to the Quran it, it cannot be the Quran is saying these things against non-Muslims you have to present Islam in such a cool and sweet way that becomes so compatible with the way that we in the West and secular people live our life he concluded his speech by announcing a $35 million grant to handpick imams and Islamic institutions. That the government has approved a $35 million grant to any imam, any religious leader among Muslim communities, or institutions, Islamic schools, madrasa, mosque, you name it, that promote such ideas that we are telling you. The grant is waiting for you. And all Islamic centers are, are, are craving for all these grants. All right. Subsequent to that conference, my friends, the day after that, in fact, in one of the uh, Australian newspapers, and I, I read it, I'm, I'm telling you from the horse's mouth, I witnessed all of this in 2006. The president of AFIC, Australian Federation of Islamic Councils, he had an interview, and in the interview, he attacked. Muslims, naive, he called them naive Muslims, who blindly follow their faith and fail to question the validity of anything that the Quran says and the Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallu Ala Muhammad wa Ala Muhammad. And shamelessly, shamelessly, he said that even Muhammad had flaws. SubhanAllah, just a day after that conference. Now, since then, 2006 up until now, unfortunately, we are witnessing the trend of deviation and perversion in Islam by self-declared sheikhs, self-declared mujtahids, self-declared marja. And it seems there is a race, a competition, because there's a grant behind it. There's a grant behind it. What I know, narrated to you, quoted to you from Australia, exactly happened in North America and in Europe as well. In fact, uh, Australia was quite behind from its counterparts. Uh, what is the remedy and the solution to that? This is a very dangerous thing, that to spoil Islam and the Muslim community, of course they cannot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting Islam. To spoil and divert and pervert the Muslim community, especially the new Muslims, uh, the new reverse Islam, by so-called sheikhs, by so-called religious leaders who like to, to sound cool and attractive to the Western lifestyle. The solution to that is what Imam Khomeini rahmatullah alayhi had quoted and many of our scholars have quoted. The good news is that right in the beginning, in fact, during the, the minor occultation, the major occultation even had not started yet. That's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Shaykh al-Kulayni narrated that someone with the name of Ishaq ibn Ya'qub, he said that I had some questions about the upcoming events. And I wanted to ask Imam al-Mahdi Ajalallah Farajah sharif He said, I wrote a letter to one of the ambassadors of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Farajah sharif with the name of Muhammad ibn Uthman al-Amri. And I said, please pass this to my uh, honorable Imam and tell him that what are we supposed to do? What the community, the Shia community is supposed to do when all these uh, 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 mischiefs are designed against them in the years to come during the major occultations, during the time of major occultation? An answer came back that Imam al-Hujjah Jalallahu Farajah Sharif with his holy handwriting he wrote, this is the, the bedrock of the principle of the authority of a jurist. Unless we have that principle, otherwise Islam will not be maintained, will not be preserved, will be perverted rather. 
The Imam says, وَأَمَّا الْحَوَادِثُ الْوَاقِعَةِ فَرْجِعُوا فِيهَا إِلَى رُوَاتِ حَدِيثِنَا فَإِنَّهُمْ حُجَّتِي عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَنَا حُجَّتُ اللَّهِ As with the upcoming events, any plot against you, you go to Wali al-Faqih, you go to the one that has the authority on my behalf on you, they have authority on my behalf for you as I have authority over them. That's why you see Imam Khawin Rahmatullah emphasize so much on the Fiqh al-Jawahiri. The Fiqh al-Jawahiri is the traditional style of becoming a Mujtahid and a Marja. Not a self-declared Mujtahid that has become Mujtahid in Harvard University, for example, in the Western lifestyle. Okay? Why he emphasized on that? My teacher Ayatollah Jawadi was saying that one of the reasons is that Sahib al Jawahir Rahmatullah Alai, when he came to the issue of discussion of the issue of the authority of the jurist, he said, any mujtahid, any faqih, so called faqih, I would say, any so called faqih who does not understand, does not acknowledge the authority of the jurist, lam yadug min al fiqh shay'an. In fact, he has not tasted the jurisprudence uh, of Ahlul Bayt, the fiqh of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, at all. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammadin wa ala aswatikum.